Hi, good afternoon. We're here with Dean from Mummy Meeks. How are you doing, Dean? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Good stuff. Nice to have you with us. Um, yeah, so we're just going to go straight in. If you'd like to tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, your kind of story and, and how long he's been doing it for, yeah, and, and what brought you to this point today. Okay, okay, right. So, um, yeah, I, I started life in a totally different world to the one I'm in now, obviously selling um, confectionery products, vegan confectionery products of all things in the FMCG world, which is totally outside of any any experience I've ever had. Um, I left school at 16 and, you know, I had that old story of not having any education, not doing very well, my GCSEs, et cetera, et cetera. I ended up being in the military and served in the infantry for five years. Um, at 17, I was walking through minefields in Kosovo, which was a great experience. And I specialized in the military and covert surveillance and I was a British army sniper as well. But unfortunately, after my second tour of Kosovo, I suffered really bad with depression and was discharged from the military when I was about 21. And at that point, I was quite lost and um, went out to Australia for a year. Fortunately, I had some family over there. Went out there, enjoyed myself, played football. Um, that was a fantastic experience. And at the end of that, I went on a journey into the fitness industry. And that's kind of the bulk of my career, really, is working mm -hmm. in the fitness industry. I kind of combined my love for the military with my love for fitness and worked for a company called British Military Fitness, which I don't think exists anymore. But basically, we were just ex-army guys uh, and girls that used to run around the, the parks all <laughs> over the country yeah. and, tra and train people. You know, normal people would would pay a monthly membership. We would train all year rounds in any weather, yeah. uh, when it's dark, just any park in the country. Um, at the peak, we had like thousands and thousands of members. And I kind of worked my way up in that business. Got some experience of like senior management. Uh, went to uni, did a degree in accountancy. Well, I did two years of that um, and got a diploma because I got a promotion at work. And then I kind of got to a point in that business where I'd gone as far as I could go. I was actually a bit gutted that I wasn't doing the classes anymore. I was doing that kind of management stuff and being in the office and got a bit kind of apathetic to it, really. And um, I left that uh, job and went and studied a master's at Hull Uni. So I was doing my MBA. And whilst I was there, there was a lad doing a talk about his business, how he'd reverse engineered a process and then learned how to launch products into the FMCG world. And mm -hmm. he was, his products were predominantly like nutritional based, which were big at that time. And I kind of um, had this light bulb moment where I thought that's what I want to do because I, I've, I've always wanted and always discussed, you know, then people are like, I want to do my own thing. And yeah. Um, I kind of had that moment then where I'm like, yeah, I could do this. So we've actually got a coffee shop that's been going 20 years next year. Um, that's 100% vegan. And it's set up by my partner, Willow, and her mum, Megan. And mm -hmm. in there, Megan has always made all of the products, like your chocolate brownies, your Rocky Roads, all those types of things. And they're great, really popular. So I kind of had the chat with them two to say, why don't we set up this business that could be scalable it could be huge you know why don't we try and take them products that you've got in yeah. the chiller and get them into like the shops because everything that's in there is like naked bars and primal yeah. and, and no disrespect but it's all kind of like oh vegans they want healthy stuff they want seeds it was like no we want chocolate they want, <laughs> yeah, they want the good stuff yeah, yeah, yeah exactly how can we inspire more people to come into this yeah. um by not giving them swaps you know by not giving them things that are as good if not better so that took five rounds of convincing. You know, it's not easy to convince your mother-in-law after leaving yeah. a job where you're earning, say, £40,000 a year to, uh, to then be like, why don't we just take a huge risk? I won't go back and earn decent money just yet. Let's just put all our life earnings uh -huh. into this dream yeah. that, that we've got. So, yeah, that, that took a little bit of convincing. And I think that was around 2015, back end of that. Um, and then in 2016, we set the business up on HMRC, Mummy Meeks Vegan Kitchen Limited, now just Mummy Meeks. And I drove around the city selling tray bakes. So just selling like packs of 12 of, of a Rocky Road product that we did that was really popular. Kind of tested the concept and mm -hmm. sold it to local businesses. And then from there, 
we did a crowdfunding campaign and found a manufacturer to make the product, get it packaged uh, and get some wholesale listings. And cool. that's, that seemed to be kind of the strategy to just get into this world. Yeah. Um, and we raised like £12,000 on Crowdfunder, which was gift-based. So we was pre-selling product. So mm -hmm. for our first manufacturer, run, we'd sold all of that product. And, and we did raise all of the money, but it was predominantly friends and family. <laughs> Yeah. they are still close to me but yeah, yeah if anyone's doing crowdfunding at the start it is just not that easy as just putting it out there and all these people that like that you don't yes. know are gonna be like here here's some money you, you've it's, it's probably the whole one campaign, of the, oh, it? yeah it's one of the most tiring things that i've done since i started the business um but definitely worth it um it's great marketing great pr mm -hmm. So, so we did that. I think that was around 2016. I might get some of the times wrong. Um, and then we started to need money, which all businesses need. Yeah. Cash, cash flow being yeah. a constant struggle. How you going to um, grow? Yeah, yeah. Um, so along there, we've like met investors and we've raised money and, and such things. So that's kind of a brief interlude of the business i don't know what i don't want to go too far because I, I don't know what questions you've got coming up and i don't want to answer answer them right now no worries. well um obviously you've covered the pandemic if we kind of from 2016 move a shuffle a bit forward um and just ask a question or a couple of questions around that as to what was the biggest impact of the pandemic for you firstly well momentum's so big in business and we just totally lost momentum you got that mm -hmm. stagnation you know um people uh, suggesting that you need to diversify and find different ways to market you know wholesalers were closed because specialist independent shops yeah. were closed so no no more orders from them um and we had some great momentum at, at that point we'd started employing our first employees outside of the family um ultimately we lost them after the pandemic um and it just become stagnant we wasn't really doing anything um mm -hmm. that that was the biggest struggle really with the pandemic is is that kind of um lack of momentum really yeah the uncertainty yeah. is what was gonna yeah what, what what can you do which ways you go Everything's exactly closed. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So out of that, did you have any sort of positives where, I mean, some people we speak to is because of the downtime, they had a chance to kind of plan and reflect, or there was a pivot into another area that opened something up that they might not have otherwise thought of, or they, there was a way of working that they adjusted to and then found that that actually worked better. Is there anything like that that came out of the um... lockdowns and that for you? I think the best thing that came out of it was the fact that we had investors on board at that point um, and the investors were concerned rightly in the lack of growth in the business and potentially my inability to actually be the person that drives the business forward, which I was always like, look, I'm not from this world. And my dream was always to have this vision, create this business and then get experts in, you know, specialists mm -hmm. from industry to come in and work in this business that we've created. That was always the dream. So the pivot came actually around a specific product. So we actually started by doing Rocky Roads, but now we're known for being the company that do the vegan cream egg, um, a product called Chucky Egg. And that was kind of a eureka moment for us when we just realized that actually our strategy needs to be built around doing swaps, direct swaps, launching products that people recognize, but as a vegan Better. version. Yeah, that, that yeah. was kind of, um, that was the pivotal moment in the business. And what good came out of um, the pandemic was because we didn't do very well, but because our investors are so miss mission aligned, that bear, bear in mind our, our investors are a non-profit organization. So they're a, cha they're a charitable organization. Any profits mm -hmm. that they get in the future will go to funding vegan charities and vegan campaigns. They're so mission aligned and they loved our product, they loved the brand, they loved the family. So they really wanted to support us. So after we'd had the issues with the pandemic and I've gone back to them and asked for more money and had this idea of the business growing around the Chucky egg, mm -hmm. they was fully behind us. But that was the point when they said, we'll do that, we'll give the money, but we need to get people into run the business. And that kind of 
is where we're at now, where we've started to employ. We employed a managing director last year. We've got a head of sales, head of marketing. And these guys have come from like blue chip organizations and industry. It's fantastic. You know, just putting a job advert out there and <laughs> having these people apply for a job for a business that you set up in a little village outside. Yeah, Kent, it's amazing. phenomenal. I love it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Thanks, Matt. Thank you for sharing that. So what does the future look like then? Where you, where you are now, what do you see as the, the main challenges are now that you're taking on people and, and sort of fulfilling the, the initial dream? So our main challenge is production, and that always has been the case. Um, if you're going to launch a product, then you want it to be as simple as possible. Um, you know, the majority of people third-party manufacture in this world. Um, some businesses do make their own products and have their own factories. But a lot of us, we reach out to manufacturers to make products for us. Um, no one makes a chucky egg, yeah. <laughs> apart from one big business. Yeah. Um, but they're not going to make a vegan version for us. So finding somebody to make that product was very difficult. Bearing in mind, I, I, I used to literally make that product myself. Um, and then we've got listings with like Asda and a bit another big listing coming up there this year. Uh, in the end, we've actually and bought our own production line, so right. we actually own the production line now. So we're still third party manufacturer, mm-hmm. um, but it's our production line in there. So we're actually going through scaling the business up right now, and for the last six months, we've been trying to fine tune that production process, and um, that's proving difficult still. So we're in that what people say is a great situation other than being able to produce and satisfy people always say well it's a great problem to have loads of people want your product but you can't make it that's that's great once you once you've nailed making it then yeah. you're off so hopefully that's what the future is that we nail yeah, production of the puzzle. yeah and just yeah, take together off. And- absolutely yeah all right brilliant um so since you've been a business owner then what would you say your biggest, biggest learning has been so far, if you can highlight one? Hmm. If you can highlight one. Um, pro- pro- potentially is what I've learned from getting people in that know what they're doing, so to speak. But that said, would never change it. Um, the, there's many ways to start a business and I'm not saying that you have to get your hands dirty and you know work in the business yourself but I've learned so much from that it's been, this has been like a master class course in the world of FMCG you know yeah. having to like literally make stuff up I mean I'll give you a story about how we got our first listing with a wholesaler so I, I'm pestering this wholesaler and um, buyer to give us a listing and they're like look you're not even producing anything you know you we're not we're not going to give you the listing but what i did was got the um paperwork from a friend of mine who had a listing and then knowing the buyer's potentially busy i filled out the paperwork sent it to the buyer and said here's that paperwork you've been asking for and they was like oh thanks so much sorry uh and that's how we got our first listing so you, I feel like you sometimes have to do that thing when you're a new brand and you're being entrepreneurial. But what I'm learning now is about having people in that are far more commercial than I am and mm-hmm. uh, know a lot about what they're doing. Um, so the quicker that you can let go of your business and get people in and drop your ego and let these people run your business and take a back seat, the better, in my yeah. opinion. Um, because you get to actually sit back and observe stuff and not actually be too consumed in in the day to day. And I love now creating systems and creating like the way that the business can run and operate. And then these people can come in and work within those systems and hopefully yeah. grow the business. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so if we were to go back in time and uh, meet you at 18, and you've already reflected on uh, on where you've come from. Um, what would be the best piece of advice you'd give to yourself at 18? Um, do you know what? I've had such an interesting and fantastic life that I 
just say I just tell myself that really you know just do what you what you anything you want you know do what you've yeah. been do what you've done um you know I didn't really kind of settle down and and grow up so to speak until I was like 27 28 and I'm glad I didn't you know I don't look back and then think oh I've missed out on this or I haven't done that I was <laughs> partying and enjoying myself and had no idea this is where I was going to end up I've, I've never been one of them people that like plan for anything or the future and sometimes mm -hmm. I'm envious of those people that know what they want to do with life and know where they want to go but for me I was just a bit of a dreamer really and just kind of went through life found your way yeah <laughs> so I, I it, knowing right so telling the 18 year old I'd probably say look through the age of 21 to 30 you're going to be severely depressed but don't worry about it <laughs> Because by the time you're like 32, 33, you actually realize how to cope with that. You know, yeah. I, when I first left the military, I, I, ne I actually never went and um, saw anybody, um, never went and, but now I take like an antidepressant and I've never felt better, you know, and I, I speak to people now. And that's why I love speaking about it in these forums because uh, yeah. it's so important. And everyone yeah, knows sure. that comes into the business and that as well. You know, I'm really open about that because mm -hmm. it, it's important nowadays to, give people the opportunity to speak about those things yeah definitely yeah the space to be able to uh, work things out absolutely yeah and so what inspires you in terms of to do what you do is there any inspiration it might be books that you're reading or podcasts or it could be the people that you work with and are you friends is there anything that stands out or what's currently inspiring you would you say Um, I mean, I, I used to read a lot of books. I don't, unfortunately, I don't really read that many books now, but I did read, um, my, my journey started with how to win friends and influence people. That was my kind of first step into those kind of, yeah. of books. Um, having no kind of formal education and nobody in my family that was entrepreneurial or started a business. I didn't really have that kind of mentor or somebody mm -hmm. I could lean on. So I did get it from a lot of books. Um, I think my inspiration right now is the world of veganism. I mean, every, all of the founders that started this business are vegan. Um, and I absolutely love bringing out products when, where people say, like, this is better than the one that we're swapping. Yeah. You know, that, that's my inspiration, really. Um, you know, forget all, like, the marketing and all the other side of things. No offense to our head of marketing, but <laughs> it's all about the products for me. Mm -hmm. And that's what we focus on. We we bring out products that are as good, if not better, than the one we're swapping. And also absolutely fixated on price. You know, yeah. be, being a vegan, understanding the objections in in getting people that are, say, flexitarian, which there are a lot more of, or people taking part in Veganuary, for example. Um, it always seems like they would swap out meat, but then when it comes to a treat, they would... Mm -hmm not want to pay above the odds so i'm really proud that we actually are a business that want that don't try to capitalize capitalize on say the profit profit of being a vegan product you know it's not yeah it's not premium it's just an alternative so we relaunched the chucky egg as a rip of 99p for example which for a vegan product is exceptional Good price for it. Yeah. Um, i really admire people like yourselves who without you in terms of um, encompassing an entrepreneurial spirit of this is the way things are done and this is where they're always done and the majority of people we just you know we go along and that's it but sometimes people come along and say hang on it doesn't have to be like this there is an alternative and without that thinking and that kind of entrepreneurial mindset those things don't don't happen so yeah massive respect for, can, for doing can stuff I, like that can i say that that's not conscious <laughs> it's <laughs> is actually um, part of, like I touched on, not being from this world. Mm -hmm. so it's just pure ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what everyone thinks you should be doing. Yeah, well, that, that's, well, that's it why, like you know, it, it's good. It's like yeah. you have uh, people who have the tenacity and determination just to see, well, this is something that I would want or, you know, yeah. to, to go after and do it. And then we have, you know, alternative options. Yeah. Um, 
because that's to me is progress which yeah is, absolutely you know, if we're not progressing then yeah. what are we doing <laughs> at least uh, in some small way in this world of mad madness that we live in oh no it's crazy crazy times yeah. but i mean you know what the whole I, I love the whole industry of veganism you know i know that it's kind of business 101 to focus on your competitors and people would think that our competitors are other vegan brands bringing out vegan products and yeah they are of course they are i'm not naive to think that they're not competition but i see it as like one big thing fighting against the big companies that's what i love and uh, you know even if those big companies launch the same products as us if we've somehow inspired them to do that that's a massive win. You know, yes. I, I'm in this to make change in the world. I'm not in this to, I was going to say I'm not in this to make money, but of course yeah, I am. I'll start a business, you know, and um, we all want to make money from our businesses. Um, but it, yeah, I'm so passionate about influencing change. Really. You can change an industry then. Yeah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> That's a good thing. Cool. Um, so lastly, is there any sort of latest news around your business that you'd want to share? Um, we just discussed quite a bit of it but um if people want to go get your products where can where can we get them from direct from the website which which places yeah so i would love people to try the chucky egg for themselves because i know that people might think well it's my product and of course i'm going to say it's amazing <laughs> but we use the best creamy oat milk chocolate that we source from uh, single origin in colombia which, I mean, I've tasted all chocolates that are available and this is by far the best one that I've tasted. And inside, it's super gooey. Like I say, we're making it ourselves now. And we've finally set up on our website um, direct delivery and we're using a fulfillment center. So if people place an order, it will be shipped the next day. Notwithstanding strikes, you know, and, and things outside of our control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's stock in there now um you can get five eggs online for six pounds and go on to mummymeegs.com please um to grab yourself check something. it out absolutely yeah just try it brilliant <laughs> thanks dean it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and i hope Thank it you. goes from strength to strength and uh you continue to, to take on the industry <laughs> me too <laughs> fingers so, crossed right. all the best thank you